Today's podcast is brought to you by Blue Canary. The bird has landed on beautiful Bainbridge Island, conveniently located at 499 Madison Avenue. ASE Master Technician Clint Ramsey brings over 15 years of experience, award-winning diagnostic skill, and a desire to reinvent the automotive repair experience. Schedule an appointment online at bluecanary.biz or call them today at 206 206- 451-4220. I got something for your mind, body, and soul. I got something for your mind, body, and soul. What's good, Podcastville? Happy generic time of day to you. You have found the Bystander Podcast, and I'm your host, Tiny Tim. Today, my guest is Deanna Dewell, a longtime friend of mine, mother of four, and a recent champion of a national physique competition. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Good. It's good to see you. Um, tell me a little bit about why this was attractive to you? I did a figure competition in an amateur show um, because I wanted to actually first build my body up and get more musculature than I kind of thought was feminine in the past. I always uh, build body body mass kind of quickly. So I thought, well, let me avoid that for 40 years. And then when I was 44, I thought, uh, I'm predisposed to building muscle. I'm just going to do it. So, so you think genetically was it. It, was some, it was something that um, came somewhat easy to you? Yeah, I think so. And I have a career that's uh, very active, so it's not difficult to learn and build muscle while I'm working. That really helps. And tell everybody what that career is. I'm a physical therapist. Yeah, I remember my wife helping you out when you were first getting started um, studying for your tests and, and such. Oh, yeah, being a sample client? Yeah. Oh, I feel sorry for her. No, she, <laughs> she uh, enjoyed spending time with you and going through that process. Yeah, yeah, I had to get certified in the U.S. because I was educated in South Africa. Hmm. Um, once you got that certification, was your idea to start a business, go to work for somebody else, um, be more conscious of your own body? Um, what yeah. was the reasoning behind being a PT person? Well, I was a psychology graduate from UW, and I thought when they said, oh, you'd like to go to your master's degree, uh, I said, no, I don't want to sit on my behind and listen to people's problems. I'd rather work them and listen to their problems. So, I mean, that's how we kind of do it is you can talk to me all you want if you can still speak, Mm -hmm. right? And you work your muscles and you work hard and you're thinking about what you're doing and um, the psyche comes out anyway. Whatever is disturbing you or whatever is stopping you kind of comes out. So I still use my psychology degree, but I don't have to sit in my behind and listen to everybody all the time. <laughs> so, some professions lend themselves to it, like a bartender is some people's psychologist. Yeah, hairdressers, you, bartenders. Hairdressers for sure. Um, you don't even prompt the, the barbers and hairdressers on the yeah. island. They just start telling stories. Yeah, you don't want to share that too much. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to share too much at all, unless you're on the podcast and you want to share it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's why dentists are probably not even close to a therapist. Well, they have to stay in the same body position. So that was the nice thing about physical therapy, too, is like you you're telling on. somebody, you know, don't always look down when you're walking or, you know, you need to build your musculature differently because all you're doing is something in front of you. So you need to build your back in your free time. So you say it all the time, but then you need to do it. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. like, I remember having pains with babies and breastfeeding and all those arm pains and tests. And then I started doing the actions of rowing. I taught somebody shoulder programs, you know, latissimus pull- pullbacks and external rotation and rowing. And suddenly my pain went away. And I was like, gosh, you know, I should really do what I say more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's got to be a counterbalance to every muscle, like your bicep and your tricep, correct? Yeah, yeah. Antagonists mm-hmm. as well as agonists. Yeah. And so, that- 
mm-hmm. you kind of forget the the opposite part. That you need the opposite. And then yeah. you build up one side and the other side is not it's functional after a certain point, correct? Well, and you're really good at that one side, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we walk forward. <laughs> we put everything in front of us and our steering wheels and our food and our desks and our computers because uh, our eyes are not in our back. But that doesn't mean that we can't use our back muscles. You know, you just need to do it in your free time because you're probably not going to get a whole lot done academically when you're rowing, <laughs> yeah. you know, or opening up open flies or something. So, And you don't walk backwards in life. So it's No, but I make everybody walk backwards yeah. in therapy. Yeah? Yeah. I know I'm walking, when I'm walking dogs during the day, I sometimes reverse my body and go up hills backwards because of yeah. – I have really weak knees, so I want to have that muscle right around the kneecap on the inside. VMO. What's it called? Vastus medialis apparatus. Easy yeah, for you to say. How good are you at Scrabble? <laughs> Lily beats me. She's 12 mm-hmm. all the time. She's a smart, smart little Yeah, yeah that's, we just say that. She's just really smart. Yeah. That leads me to saying, like, you were asking, why did I do this competition? And it's sort of like... There's always excuses like, oh, well, I didn't have time for that because whatever. I didn't have the money. I wasn't raised right. I, you know, a different sex, a different uh, gender, uh, whatever. There's lots of excuses to not do things. Jim's too far. Yeah. So I say that genetics, you know, was predisposing me to building body mass. But there's lots of things that I could say like, well, I have four kids. I don't have time to do this. You know, I don't have time. I'm, I own my own business. I have to raise, I have to earn enough money to raise my whole house. I don't have like a support system like that financially. So there's lots of excuses, but that's what I don't want to stand in my way or my clients' ways. So usually I have really high expectations for my clients, which they only have to meet by the time they're dead, really. I mean, it's not like you have to meet this within this year. But I have such high expectations of you can walk or you can whatever, build body bulk or muscle or whatever it is you're looking at. It's just your mindset, really. It's like if you decide, stop blaming the excuses. When you go into a mindset, how do you set your mind? Is it short incremental goals? Is it smart goals that are achievable? Yeah, how, those, that's how a good s- acronym. How do you, <laughs> yeah, how do you set the, the standard for your goal? That's a good question. I, I don't use those acronyms unless I'm trying to teach somebody how to find their own goals. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, I think I I know that you can't have everything all at the same time. What? Yeah. So, no one told you that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so I think, what do I really want right now? And um, how much do I want it? What am I willing to sacrifice for that? You know? Mm-hmm. And does it have like a middle road? You know, some goals, like let's say I really wanted to be first at this competition. You know, because she asked, I went in for coaching before this to even learn a little bit about it. And she's like, well, what do you really want? Are you looking at making your body better, losing body fat? You know, what are you looking at? Do you want to win first? Are you wanting to go pro? You know, what is your kind of thing? And I was like, definitely not first. That's not even anywhere on my spectrum of want. But I want to change my body in a way that I never felt successful at changing before. And I feel like that goal could help me. So I guess when I set goals, I think, what's, what do I really want and what's realistic? Because my biggest thing is my kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, really, hands down, they're the reason I want to stay alive every day. So if anything is harmful to them, I won't do it. You know, if it says you're not going to be able to raise them as efficiently or as peacefully or whatever, then I just won't do it. Have any of them started picking up the weights? Logan has. I kind of noticed when he was making a uh, sandwich the other day. You know, yeah. Bicep bounced out at me, and I was like, well, what is that? <laughs> but then when we go to the gym, I try to say, you know, you don't have to lift as he- heavy as me. No mm-hmm. 17-year-old wants their 47-year-old mom saying, you don't have to lift as heavy as me. I'm like, don't hurt yourself. That's my weight. You can have mm-hmm. this one. I'll give you another two times. And he's like, no, Mom, I'm going to get up there. And with my son, I'm always like, you can just do more reps. You don't have to go that heavy. Yes. Well, they're, you know, they're amazing, too. They're little boys with testosterone. I'm a 47-year-old woman. There's very little of that left. You know, there's little hormonal kind of stuff going on. So, so it's I'm sorry to interject. Different. But, um, is there anything that you seek out hormonally to help, you know, behoove this situation? Like, Do I take drugs? Not so much drugs, <laughs> but, you know, there's protein, there's testosterone, there's blockchain, amino acids, yeah. stuff like that. Branched, yes. Branched chain amino acids. That's, That's right. Yours cool. is blocked. <laughs> Mine is branched. 
Went on a crypto yeah. slide there. <laughs> No, it's uh, – yeah, there is a lot to the diet. I mean, the diet – you can't outwork out a, a bad diet. So you got to focus on the diet, and that diet includes everything that goes in your mouth, so all of the supplements and things like that. So I early on chose that I didn't want to um, take any artificial uh, drugs that changed my hormones, and I also didn't want to get breast implants. So my coach knew that, and she is of the same mind, which is fine. Um, so we didn't go there with that. It wasn't even an option. It's like when I gave birth, I said, I'm just not even going to have that option of C-section and drugs. I'm just au natural. So mm-hmm. that's just how I went into it. And, you know, that's, that's been good. It limits me as far as how far I can go because I won't have the same body as those I'm competing against because there's a high percentage of people that do use uh, hormones, male and female. Is competition, is it um, a drug-free competition? No. Uh, they say that they're against drugs, but they NPC, but they don't what have. What is PC? NPC is National Physique Committee. Gotcha. That's who sponsored the show, or is the federation that provides the rules for the show that I did. Um, once you win at an NPC kind of amateur show, you have to win overall, like the best female there, the best male there, that kind of thing. You get a pro card, and then your pro card can take you a little further on. You can go to IFBB competitions, which are professional competitions where you might have prize money and such. But Mm -hmm. I only did amateur competitions. So when you found a coach and this competition committee, was that something you discovered here on Bainbridge? Um, You're asking me to trace back. I had a friend that was a bodybuilder. When he was 19, he did, uh, you know, kind of steroids and things like that and then ceased because he had, I think he had a heart attack when he was young due to the medications, the illegal medications. So, uh, but he still bodybuilds. And when I kind of witnessed him, I first thought his body looked kind of bizarre, you know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. why would you even want that much time in the gym to build that many muscles? And why do you want them? Because now you need custom made clothes and stuff like that. But somehow it inspired me. Somehow that you know how like life goes, like you get tiny little messages, and somehow they overwhelm you. And you're like, okay, fine, I see the picture. I see what you're trying to kind of tell me. So then there was another person, a female, who uh, was working with my partner, Greg, and she was in the nursing area, and she had done some bodybuilding and bikini competitions. What's the difference? Well, okay. We have lots of threads that we keep catching on, don't we? Yeah. I got all, we still haven't finished the diet stuff yet. Well, that's, that's a really long conversation. I it is. I do want to get back to that. Yeah, we'll do have to do that. I have Maybe some we'll crazy questions that stuff. pop up, like, do supplements have calories? But uh, Yeah, okay. Well, so we have to jot down diet because eventually we have to come back to that. Um, and then what, your last question? Do supplements have calories? No, that was like three questions ago. Oh, my fault. Okay. Go on. <laughs> so the nurse... Yes. That also oh, did bi- bikini competition. Bikini oh, yeah, that's what you're asking. What's the difference building. in bikini? Okay, so we'll get to that. So anyway, all these people, the nurse finally told me, I said, who do you coach? Who coaches you? You know, how do I even get started on this? And mm-hmm. I did see a natural show. So when you asked about... Um, Drugs versus natural. Our dr- yeah, there is a natural competition committee. And you can go and compete with them. And they do test you. They do a lie detector test. And if they want to, they can randomly do a pee detection test. So lie detector test, you go and you put all your little probes on and you say, I haven't taken any of those illegal substances, and they'll ask you them. And if you don't pass that, then you're not allowed to compete for a year. Wow. Um, And they also randomly might choose competitors to do a urine sample, right? So that's really strict on certain medications you, or certain drugs that you can't take. But some of them are even things that are in natural protein powders. So it is really tricky. But when I went and saw that show, there was only like three people competing. And it was in like a hotel sort of uh, yeah. conference room and mm-hmm. no fancy lights. And it just looked embarrassing. And I thought, I'm not doing that. So when it came time to choose where do I compete, where am I going to go spend my money and effort and have that goal line, I wanted to be with the most people, the people who really worked hard, even though some of them may have chosen drugs. Many of them don't, at least amateur. Nobody wants to spend money like that on that Mm -hmm. and, you know, harm their body for that kind of thing. So most of the women of my age were not taking any medications like that. Um, So the nurse told me about Tanji Johnson. Tanji Johnson is an IFBB pro in fitness. Um, She's probably been doing it like 25 years. She's the same age as me. And she's retired about maybe mm, probably six or seven years ago because I started with her four years ago. So she knows everything there is to know about it, and she and her husband are both uh, judges and 
Um, so she kind of led me there, like assessed my body, told me, you got this going for you and this not, you know, so oh. invest your money and your time in this because this is where you're weaker on the scale of what they're going to judge you on. Like a, and here you're doing great. a car, but it's your body. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, great brakes, but your windscreen wipers, you know, whatever. Windscreen. I love it. <laughs> now I know you're foreign, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, really? No, car park. Oh, you know, that's I true. English friends. I'll put you like in that. the boot if you're not careful. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you asked me about bikini figure. You asked me what are the kind of classes. Of yeah, the difference MB- for sure. Yeah, yeah. Bikini, um, all this stuff only came out like I was just trying to look up the dates so I was more knowledgeable when you talked to me. But generally like 2012 is when some of this stuff started coming out as classes that were um, for females. Before that was bodybuilding. You know, 1970s, they finally let women do uh, bodybuilding and powerlifting and such. Um, but it really was has had a difficult start. And there were women that were obviously taking uh, medications, drugs, androgen drugs and things that made them look not feminine. And they were getting a lot of controversy on um, how women were getting judged because they were bigger, but that's because they had a lot of testosterone drugs and people were worried about the health because there's a lot of detrimental health to that, right? Uh, so they started saying, well, women need to be 20% less muscle to compete. You know, this is all happening throughout the history mm. of bodybuilding. Um, and finally, they came out with a few extra classes like bikini, which was supposed to be the easiest class to kind of come into. So you had to build a little bit of musculature, have a nice skinny waist and a fairly round behind. That's bikini. And you literally wear a bikini. You're allowed to wear a bikini that's off the uh, rack, they call it. But most bikinis are uh, professionally sewn with sequins so that they glitter under the lights. And you're allowed to compete without, you know, all of the other things like uh, what I did is a tan and hair and makeup and those things. But you have to have a bikini and you have to have high heels. Um, but you're judged on your skin tone. Why high heels? Why high heels? Well, they accentuate the body shape. The diamond calves? Yeah, they do. They accentuate your calves and they lengthen your leg and they so make your waist the look men more wear narrow. why high heels? Well, we don't want a man looking like a woman in bodybuilding. Gotcha. Right? You want, and that's where some of the women started looking like men in bodybuilding. And I don't, I'm not a you know, expert on all of this. I just mm-hmm. have investigated because I needed to know what they were going to judge me on. I needed to know what they were prizing and what they weren't prizing so that I could, you know, compete anyway. So, um, so bikini is that supposed to be the easiest class to get into. Personally, as a Pilates teacher, and 44 was my first competition, I was 44, um, my waist was much wider than most of the younger and uh, bikini models because I use, I do a lot of side planks. I do Pilates. I'm like, wide <laughs> you, you, you're so, addicted to pilates too yeah i mean yeah. Pilates as long is as i've known religion. you there's been yeah, a pilates machine yeah, that you have to step over it's get. very healthy for you yeah. yeah so i was not uh my judge or my coach sorry she looked at me and she says you know great deltoids whatever you know you you look fit all this stuff all this great she said you don't do makeup very well but we'll work on that we'll pay someone to put makeup mm-hmm. on you you know um but she said your waist is wide And she explained to me, you know, in bikini, you're trying to get your waist narrow. So the only way I can get my waist narrow is by turning my hips opposite of my torso. But because my muscles were so strong there on the sides, I had not uh, not an easy job with rotation. I also, when I do Pilates rotation, I rotate with my muscles turning me rather than kind of torquing myself like yoga where you might kind of get into a pose and then release and kind of stretch farther. I instead would only turn my body as much as my muscles could turn my body. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Active versus passive. So I had a lot of shaping to do because I started out with bikini and I also decided to do figure. And figure Mm -hmm. is a slightly squared position. So you're looking at a wide uh, between the shoulders and wide hips and narrow waist. But it's not quite the same as an hourglass. So think of an X. Mm -hmm. So um, figure is more like an X and you do quarter turns. So you're analyzed in a front facing pose front pose then you quarter turn to the right and you show them your right side quarter turn to the back and you show them your back side quarter turn to the le- uh, the right again and you show them your left side that's all that figure is four poses um bikini does front and back and you can do a few different um flary poses like bikini is a lot of jewelry and makeup and you're supposed to look sexy and exactly the back pose is really uh 
a behind pose. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, it just looks like sex. <laughs> Whereas figure, you see the musculature, you know, you pop out, yeah. you learn how to pop your, your lats, lats out. Yeah. yeah, you build your lats. I mean... You don't have to flex while I'm talk- I know. We're talking. It's intuitive. But my, I'm getting the bra my ass size... here in a minute. <laughs> bad questions. <laughs> the bra size gets bigger because your lats get bigger. Even though if you're uh, not artificially yeah. endowed, you know, then your breast size gets much smaller because you have less fat. Makes so you, you get skinnier that way, but broader there. Let me so ask that. you a question a little off topic. Has um, transgender jumped into this That's a good question. Someone else asked me that too. I have never witnessed it on the stage. Um, and I could ask because you'd think that it would be open. It's just like all female sports or whatever sports that are gender separated where we have certain lines because of hormones. But if hormones are not illegal to take, say, uh, then why should it be illegal? And plastic surgery is not illegal. Yeah, then so why you can enhance your it? shoulders by getting a shoulder. Well, you could have great whatever. shoulders because you were genetically a male and perform as a female. I don't, I don't know. I've never seen it, but maybe that's just because it's an amateur show. Um, I cannot imagine there not being plenty of people that wish to compete in bodybuilding that are transgender. So I'm sure we're going to find it somewhere. You know. yeah, the, we'll the show the I did, soon. yeah, the most recent show, I got to just say one quick note too. Um, they did a special introduction before one uh, bikini class for women that were, you know, 40 plus kind of thing. And I don't know if it was because this particular person was in the show or they just randomly wanted to say it. But they said, you know, remember, this is an amateur show and everybody is allowed. And um, one of the a f- a friend, I guess, an acquaintance I know from my gym, she went into the show and she was not um, coached like the others. And she was not young and she was larger, um, mm-hmm. a, you know, a, a well endowed woman. And she went and did her bikini competition. And when I heard that she was enrolled, I was like, or she had, you know, uh, paid and she was going to go and compete. I was like, has someone explained things to you? Because I just didn't want her to feel embarrassed that if she is of a larger size than all of the other competitors, you know, and she wanted to do it. Yeah, you see it in the the plus size models now, too. Yeah. There's an acceptance. Um, it was totally accepted, and it was her goal. And I don't know how the other competitors felt because I didn't really care. I, you know, I went over posing with her, and I felt like, right on, well done. You know, you went because that was your goal, and you didn't think that you had to get to be like that twenty-nine-year-old bikini model. You were yourself, and it motivated you to work out every day. Because then the next day, I saw her back at the gym working out, sweating. And I'm like, geez, that's even better than me. I'm feeling depressed and I want to take a day off. She didn't take a day off. She's just like right back into it. So, I mean, I really appreciate that if we were talking about transgender, anybody that wants to do it as long as they're all out. There are certain rules so that the judges can judge you um, accordingly compared to your peers. So, mm-hmm. you know, you can't go in there with Different a T-shirt and shorts. And yeah, yeah, like height classes, um, you know, age classes. So, you know, if you want to get judged next to everybody, you can. But there's open classes. That's what open is. But otherwise, you can get judged according to your age, according to your height, you know, a certain spectrum of height, um, that kind of stuff. But I was just – I was really happy about seeing that, that it is open to all and you don't have to meet a certain standard. But if it motivates you – because – Getting in front of people at 47 in a bikini, it really motivates me to not want to have that extra glass of wine for two months or that, you know, popcorn or ice cream or everything else that I had to sacrifice for those months. You know, just that idea that, well, my competitor is not going to be eating it, so I'm not going to eat it. So I just, you know, it motivates you having a, a threat like a bikini. I don't think I've ever seen you eat ice cream even at children's parties. <laughs> um, but let's get back to diet a little bit. There's so much debate about food and mm, yeah. ve- vegan, vegetarian, meat and fruit, eat your vegetables and grains. Yeah. There's so many conflicting ideas out there. And I think you go to a doctor, there, it's not like a cure-all. It's a, it's a quick fix. It's a Band-Aid. It's a pill. Very few doctors that I've ever come across have a background in nutrition. Mm. And then even if you were to have a background in nutrition, our beliefs are always evolving. So how did you manage your way through there? What Did you do a calorie deficit? Did you do a calorie load to get muscle dense, density to start? 
Did you do lean meats and fats? Did you skip dairy? Um, yeah. Alcohol definitely ain't helping nothing, but well, that's tell exactly, me a little yeah. bit of, about your process. Well, the first time I did it when I was 44, then uh, all along I'd been like doing triathlons, so I'd been leaning out, and I needed to bulk up. Right, and that's kind of pretty normal. Most people have a stage of bulking. Yeah. So, how much do you have to eat in order to bulk up? You need to eat foods that are going to bring on muscle. So, foods that are not going to bring on muscle or give you other things are just not are not allowed in my book. Right. So, everybody does it slightly differently. But I'm not going to when I'm ready to start, which was always January. I liked January, so I had six months before my show, which was in June. That's how I ran things for my the two times I did it. Um, so from January, I it's called clean eating, where you just don't eat crap. You don't eat things that are not going to be um, useful to your body. So, you know, carbohydrates are still very useful. In fact, you have to have them because otherwise I'm not going to want to go into the gym after an eight-hour day of working on people as a physical therapist. Plus you want the carbs so you don't burn the protein that's like yeah, the helping muscle. you yeah. accomplish so, the muscularity. So there, you count macros. I count my macros. I'll talk about how I did it rather than how everybody should do it because it is so different per person, like you were saying. Tell me, tell everybody else um, what macro means. It's macronutrients and what mm -hmm. constitutes a macronutrient so the versus macro a micronutrient. Yeah, good idea. Macronutrients are your protein, carbohydrates, and fat. That's it. Those are the macronutrients. So you can look at your um, calorie intake and divide it generally like one-third, one-third, one-third is a nice kind of healthy way to go. Uh, when you're starting to build more body bulk, you're going to want more protein than one-third of your diet to be. Uh, so that so I look at my body weight, I dare I say it, on a podcast. Well, you told everybody you're 47, so oh, yeah, go that's ahead. True. Okay, so my body weight is 130, generally, give or take. So I would take 130 and add another half on that. So you're 1.5 times, and that would be my minimum amount of protein. And then, What do you mean? So 130, 130 plus another 65, uh, right, is 195. So I was looking at about 200 grams of protein per day. Interesting. Yeah. And then you need a lot of vegetables to counter that. You need, you need a lot of dietary fiber, right? Because if you're eating that much protein, you can get really stumped up, if you know what I'm saying, or otherwise. But you need things to help the digestive flow. So you eat as many vegetables as possible. Um, for the first three months since I was bulking, I didn't cut out certain vegetables. There are certain vegetables that are higher in sugar, sweet corn, carrots, snap peas, so um, during my final few months, I would cut those sweet ones out. So I, I keep getting more and more questions, and this okay, is fascinating Okay, you started with me. macros, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, sugar. Sugar. Between fruit and vegetable sugar. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between there? Because that fruit, fructose mm -hmm. in, in fruit is supposed to be non-harmful to you. Is that well? Non-harmful. It's still a sugar. So, if you, sugar is a source of uh, energy, if you didn't use the energy, it gets stored. So, it's fat, right? It's a source of energy. So, if you don't use that sugar, like let's say you just worked out, so you eat your piece of fruit after you just worked out, or you're just going to work out. If you eat your fruit at night because you want to have a sweet dessert and you think that's a nice healthy one, you know, it's just sugar that's going to get stored as fat. So um, on my diet, for my particular thing, um, fruit was pretty much out, right, when I went to the more stricter side. On the other side, it would be limited fruit, low-sugar fruits. Strawberries are much lower sugar. And don't strawberries you know? have a good amount of protein in them as well? I don't know about that one. Okay. I don't know about strawberries and protein. I know they got bugs, and you better wash those things. <laughs> Cantaloupe is a really nice slow-burning sugar, so it's low on carbohydrates and slow-burning. Sugar is carbohydrates, right? So we talked about those macros. You have to count every bit of sugar as a carbohydrate. So if you're looking at thinking of carbohydrates as only bread, that's just not appropriate. Your wine is a carbohydrate. Your, mm. you know, any alcohol, certainly. An apple any has fruit. carbs, right? Yeah, it, all of the sugar in an apple is all carbohydrate. So those carbohydrates are great for energy sources, but you need to use the energy or don't eat it, right? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and then you want those slow burning ones. So that's why. So my carbs were limited to um, brown rice, oatmeal, sweet potato, and then the fruits I limited personally to strawberries, um, green apples, uh, cantaloupe. Why green? Much lower in sugar than red. Okay, honey crisp apple is like my favorite thing in the world. Well, you can have half of those if you're going to go work out. Half? Half of one. Yeah, you're going to go work out? You can I'm have I'm ride my bike home. But well, you got to ride it up, uphill home. Uphill, do some sprints. <laughs> I'm 56, <laughs> not 47. I'm past my prime. No, that's, uh, that's good to know. Um, yeah. Can't stand rice, love yams and sweet potatoes, though. There you go. They're just a slow burning carb and they satisfy that sweet kind of craving. I mean, we have cravings because we need things, right? Mm-hmm. Like chocolate. That's yeah. like a basic food group, right? Well, I have a dark square every day. There you go. A cacao over 85%. Yeah. There but. you go. Well, I mean, eventually you have to cut those things out if you're going to trim down to a lower body fat than what is even recommended, right? Do you have to dehydrate yourself, too, before competition, like drink less water for a few days? Yeah, you go through some stages. So um, if you've ever seen people at the gym, you know, or really like serious weightlifters, they usually have those big gallon jugs. You know, the general rule is if you're trying to build body bulk, you're going to have a gallon of water every day, right? Um, well, shouldn't you kind of have a gallon of water every day regardless because that cleanses everything you out of your body? Do you have a gallon of water a day? Try really hard. You do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I never thought about having to drink a gallon until I started lifting weights. And mm. then I measured it out what's a gallon, and I got four of my big water bottles. And, right. you know, that's you line it. Up for, we have a uh, water cooler at the house now ever yeah. since COVID because uh, my wife's been working from home. Um, and I just said, oh, we're going to have the water cooler. And if you want to have a conversation on your break, we'll just stand here and drink some water. <laughs> It's worked out great because you have the hot for the tea and the, the cold. Yeah. And, and then you measure it? No, just in huge bottles. Okay. Well, because our point was getting the gallon in you. How are you going to know if you got the gallon in you? A couple 32 ounces. Okay. Well, that reminds me of how do you know what your diet is? Yeah, I, I yeah. don't a lot do of people, diary. Yes. So I, and I suggest to my clients that they try too. So my fitness pal has been my go to for a dietary. My uh, fitness a diary. pal? Like, a, is that an an imaginary app. friend? Or, yeah, uh, app. me, my fitness pal. No, it's an app. Uh, and it tends to have a whole lot of foods on it. So if I don't have the barcode, it can scan your barcode if you have a food like that. But let's, you know, a sweet potato doesn't have a barcode. So I'll put in sweet potato and then I'll put how I cooked it, you know, baked, microwaved, do whatever. Do you weigh your food? Uh, when I'm in my prep stage, I do. Because do you, do you how prep else on the weekend you know? for the whole week? No, I have four children. Yes, you do. Yes, no. um, But I do spend hours on that food prep during the final months. It's not the whole time. So the first, like, so we're talking about six months. So four months of it was body bulking. So I had to eat more than I naturally would. I usually run, 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 work my seven hours, eat a few snacks, and then I'll eat at like 3.30. That's just my, that was my go-to. But that didn't produce enough metabolism and enough nutrients to build body bulk. So I had to increase my calories with good foods, you know, more protein. I, I eat chicken. I didn't used to before I bodybuild. I didn't eat um, meats, just fish. Um, mm-hmm. But I just started eating chicken because it's really hard to get enough protein from uh, protein powders and things like that. Why didn't you go with, like, beans? Beans are very high in carbohydrates. Mm. So, you know, there are some people, and everybody's body is so different. I have seen some people that do their prep on a vegan diet. I don't, my body wouldn't do that. My body finds those carbohydrates and just loves to keep them all in these little nooks and crannies in my body. So um, I, ha- I do a lot better on a keto-friendly kind of diet, even though, you know, your energy goes down because you're not eating carbs. Um, and because I was also trying to lose body fat, I wasn't going to do like those pure keto diets where you have high fat. Which, you know, we don't need to go into too many details about it because I'm also not a certified ketosis, nutrition. Ketosis, right? They're trying to get ketosis, your, yeah. They're trying to get your body in ketosis. So we did regulate that ketosis because uh, we were trying to get my body into a state of ketosis for, you know, six hours or something. You don't want to be unhealthy and you only, only want to go to mild, but there's these little urine sticks that you pee on when you're doing your keto uh, cycles so that you make sure you don't get yourself into moderate ketosis, only mild. But is ketis- <laughs> ketosis. Ketosis, does it lend itself to fasting? No, no. not particularly. Um, I mean, you can because you don't have things coming in. 
But generally, uh, the ketosis is the low carbs while you're still sustaining. Like, I wouldn't want to fast when I'm bodybuilding because you just wear out all of your muscle, too. Mm -hmm. So um, during the last two months, that's kind of what you're trying to counter is you're going to reduce your diet and you don't want to lose uh, too much muscle mass. So you increase muscle. Um, it's got to be a struggle eating. to get ripped and yeah and especially and without medications or drugs right i mean the trainer I had this year she i kept complaining because i'm about three years older i'm like things just don't seem to come off from the lower half you know you lose it in your face and your breasts and all these things are getting skinnier but then your lower half stays pretty hefty because of my age and she's like you know you're not you decided you're not going to be taking any medications so you're going to lose muscle mass too your top half is going to start to lose muscle mass before we get to the fat loss around down there so it's hard to isolate but you can't yeah, yeah it's the natural body it's a natural inclination right mm -hmm. god or whatever built our bodies this way wanted you to have some space down there <laughs> just in case <laughs> mm -hmm. um oh you said dehydration too you wanted to talk about that yeah but before we get off food tell me what's good and bad about bananas bananas are very high in sugar Got you. Because I. They're the highest fruit and sugar. I used to be around, well, I used to work at a gym and there was a couple bodybuilders and it seemed like they always were eating bananas. They're high in potassium, which stops muscle cramps. cramps yeah. And when you are dehydrating, which is really only the final 24 hours, really. Mm -hmm. And it's not total dehydration. You can have up to something like that when you're thirsty, but you do want to moderate. Um, so yeah, potassium, but I brought my potassium levels up with other things like pumpkin seeds and halibut. And there's a lot of other foods that can bring it up without the sugar. And men are different than women and men that are Get out. 25 years. <laughs> I know. I, know. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you too soon. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you might've seen men, younger men eat differently than a 47 year old woman who's going into a bodybuilding contest, but I would not touch a banana. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Please continue. Too much sugar. So yes, about dehydration. So in the final two weeks, um, the way I do it is then I cut out so salt. And for me, I'm already a very low blood pressure person. So that is a little difficult. You have to watch your balance and make sure you don't get literally off balance. Um, uh, but it's only, you know, like two weeks of low salt. So I have my no salt, which is a potassium salt, another way to bring in potassium. So you want to still keep your electrolytes, but not necessarily salt. And then the last 24 hours, then you have no salt in your foods, of course. You know, like peanut butter can't have salt if you're going to have peanut butter, that kind of stuff. Um, and your protein bars and your protein powders have to all, you have to look at the salt. Super clean, yeah. Yeah, super clean. And my protein powder, I, I flexed. The first time I did it, I had whey powder. It's cheaper, um, you know, 100% whey, but it comes from cow's milk. And I previously didn't agree with cow's milk. In yeah. my past, since I was a kid, so yeah. and that has, it didn't. I didn't. My tummy didn't like it. Protein and I'm not and sure. Lac, I'm not sure if it's the lactose, but a lot of people I've read uh, get disturbed by whey after a certain amount of time. Yeah, so I, I did I've a heard year, but that it can be very unhealthy. Then my for tummy you. just started feeling icky, so I went to vegan powders, like pea protein or something. Yeah, but then we ran into the problem with all those pea powders, uh, those pr uh, protein powders that are vegan, having high carbohydrates because they're made out of plant. So then I had to go on the search for a vegan powder that was still low in carbs. And I found like two or three on Amazon that I just buy all the time now. So that's, I mean, it's, it's a struggle to find the right food and what agrees with your body and your finances, right? I mean, yeah. as we said, I've got my four kids and I don't want to, you know, turn anything down for them. <laughs> but these things cost money. So, I mean, someone said that's... Normal sports are expensive. Your know, hobbies are expensive. They said, you know, thinking of jet skiing or skiing or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. hobbies are expensive. So this was my hobby, I guess. Um, but it's another reason why I probably won't compete again because um, it's very expensive to pay for your entry fee to a competition, your tan, your hair, your makeup, your bikini. This last time, did you have sponsorship? No, I wouldn't get sponsorship. I don't think anybody. I mean. I could hardly get anybody to talk to me about it. <laughs> I mean, I had to pay <laughs> you to let me on the podcast. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's hard. It's like there's a lot of people out there. And to be honest, 47, uh, you know, I look great for a 47-year-old, but... Give it up. Yeah, dude, I do. I look good. <laughs> 
But uh, if you're going to pay somebody to be a representative, probably you're going to choose somebody younger. You know, if you're going to go sponsor somebody to be on your magazine or represent your food, you're going to choose know. someone a little younger. I'm going to pick a winner, and you won the competition, and oh, you qualified yeah. to be professional. We haven't and- talked about that. I did win first, but do you know why I won first? You only want to enter? What? Yeah. No. Uh huh. So we went Shut through. Shut the front door. I know. We went through bikini and figure. I told you about those two classes. Mm-hmm. I decided this year I'm going to go for physique. Mm-hmm. It's the one besides bodybuilding where you need the most musculature. I'm like, screw it. I'm just going for gold, right? I want the biggest muscles that I personally can get with raising my four children, doing my own business, being a nice person, kind to others. <laughs> But I want to get the most muscles I can get. So I went for physique, and it takes extra poses. You do the four-quarter turns, but Mm -hmm. then you also do a front double bicep pose where you show your biceps. You do a front pectoral pose of chest. You do another back pose with your calf showing, uh, a tricep pose, and an abdominal pose. So you have separate muscle sets that you're working extra hard because you're going to show them off. And you're supposed to have a little bit lower body fat than the figure, which is a little lower body fat than the bikini. So I went physique, and um, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to do this. And so I found a physique coach, too, a woman who was a previous bodybuilder and could really coach me in this because the previous coach mostly was figure and bikini. You have to learn how to do these different poses. Um, then it turned out I was the only one competing in physique. So, yeah, I won first, but it's slightly disappointing when you're the only one competing. Yeah, but you have a noticeably different body than four years ago. Oh, you think so? Oh, for sure. Oh, that's sweet of you to say. Mm, I it, won't tell you why. <laughs> I showed her the pictures. It's okay. There's, there's no um, no hiding things from her. <laughs> so well, what, yeah, it's it's changed. What? Uh, sorry, it's good. What kind of? Um, it'll change again, man. See me another four years. It'll be different, right? Hope I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of uh, workouts were you doing? Was it? I know you're just a Pilates freak and a running freak. Well, I couldn't run anymore. Right. So you have to stop the cardio while your body bulking. So were you hitting like iron or were you doing banding or Pilates or well, natural stuff like yeah. body weight stuff like push ups, chin ups? Uh, I would do sit-ups. that stuff that you said like body weight and bands and stuff like that when I teach my classes. So I'd get a pretty good workout because I teach um, my clients classes of like eight people or less. And we go through, I have a variety of programs I do throughout the week with them. But I'm trying to get them to work every single muscle they've got, you know, keep them balanced, keep them away from the PTs, keep them healthy, happy, all that stuff. So, yeah. So I would work those muscles already. What I was missing was iron. So I needed to go into the weight room and lift iron. But how do you lift iron? I didn't know that before because I hadn't trained to build body bulk. I had only trained to get defined and look very feminine and very pretty. And now it's like, I don't need to be pretty. I am whatever I am. I need body bulk. So I had to learn. So I I created a program with the help of a trainer at Island Fitness, Rachel Main. I think she's living in Gig Harbor now. But she helped me come up with a pull, a push, and a leg day. And then throughout years, I've modified that because you do the product, you do the program, and then you come out with a body. And whether or not you want that body, like I'd look at my body and I'd see where I had some empty spaces for certain exercises I hadn't done. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you ever too close to your own body to see things? Like, you look in the mirror every day. And well, I can't see my back. Sure you could. A little hair it's mirror. It's really and hard mirror. to see. I have um, Pete Saludos took a photo of my back, and um, I don't know if you know him. He's a local uh, I've yet to meet him, but I've oh. seen he worked with Greg Nance as well, last um, podcast guest. Oh, okay. Amazing. So I did a photograph with him with my arms outspread, and when he showed me the photograph afterwards, you I said— You put those guns back. <laughs> I don't need to see them. <laughs> Nobody can see this through the radio. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I said, did you like Photoshop all those lines? I said, you must have Photoshopped that, right? He's like, no, I didn't touch that. All I did was, you know, the normal lighting of the shot and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it just looked like an, an, an alien to me at first when I saw it, like the lines, the uh, striations, it's striations, called, of the yeah. muscles in my back. So there was no way I could see that without a photographer doing it because, you know, just looking at a section of your back, you can't see that. So the Easy. photographs really help. So so, I mean, that was great because you're prepped for that kind of photo shoot. He has beautiful lighting and oh, you're he's oiled. An incredible photographer. And, yeah, and he gets you looking your best. But 
um, it's it was really remarkable to see my body through his photographs. And so I did it again, too, this time uh, in my two weeks before a show. I, we had another photo shoot, and I just love the way he makes me feel like I'm an, a piece of art. You know, some people have likened bodybuilding to body art. Mm, you know, you're making, you're making something amazing out of your body. And sometimes people at the gym, they're like, oh, now I see that muscle. They can see something on me like, oh, yeah, my trainer's always telling me I need to build that, but I didn't know what it was until I could see it on you. So, I mean, it's kind of useful having a little, you know, encyclopedia of muscles on you mm-hmm. and just kind of pop it out. Book. And, yeah. yeah. How did we get on that subject? I oh, know. I was looking at my pear shape and going, pear's got sugar. I can't. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> no, we were, we were talking about um, working out and whether you oh, do yeah. Pilates, Pull, iron. push, yeah. So my Let's son is it. really, he talks this I see language. Him. Yeah, you guys work at the same, yeah, yeah. Work out at the same gym sometimes. I try not to, you know, no, he tell liked... him how to do his exercises or anything. You know, if I saw him hurting himself, I would stop him. But I try not to butt in with the kids because, you know, you want them to feel manly and not have a 47-year-old. I, I, Mama come and tell them how to do their weightlifting. I still want him to get hurt in the gym. That's, but he talks a lot about pulling and pushing. Ah. Today was a pull day. Yeah, Today good. Was a He's push learned day. that. Great. So explain that to the listeners what that means. So uh, if you push something, you put your hands up, push against something, you're using the front part of your body, right? Mm-hmm. You're using your pectorals, your pectoralis, which are on your chest, right? I'm also straightening my arms when I push something. So you're using the back of your arms, which is called your triceps. So these are some main areas. If I actually literally had a wagon and I need to push the wagon, I'd also be using my legs. I'd be using my quads to go from a mm-hmm. bent to a straight leg. When you go from a bent leg to a straight leg, you use your quads. So if you literally want to take the whole body down into a push day, you're going to think, what are all the muscles I need to push an object, right? I need my abs, too. So you can also just physically touch the front of your body, but it happens to be the back of your arm as far as that arm part goes because you need to straighten your arm. Um, And then a pull day, if I grab something, I need to pull it towards me. These are the muscles I'm using on a pull day, okay? Um, if I grab something with my foot and I want to pull it towards me, I'm using my hamstrings. So if I wanted to front add my legs, body. yeah, I'm going to use – so you could say front and back of your body. Great. But it really helps me understand my exercises and what I'm going to do. So let's say I'm going to pull you towards me. I might make, make me self, myself the strongest I could be. Can you, you can see, but the audience can't see. I'm keeping my elbows narrow to my waist, and I'm using a lot of biceps to pull me in, to pull you in. But um, you want to accentuate everything. So you might lift up your arms wide and pull that way, right? You might also pull backwards. Close grip, wide grip. Yeah, like I I call it the Y, Y YMCA kind of thing. And we get up Y because you need to pull something back above your head. You need to pull something wide. You need to pull it narrow. So getting your shoulders and all those angles will help all of the angles around your scapula, your shoulder blade, and pull it towards your spine, as well as you have some muscles between your scapula and your spine, your rhomboids. It helps build those. What are those? Rhomboid is a shape. And there's a muscle between no, your... No, a triangle and a circle is a shape. What's a rhomboid? <laughs> a rhomboid is a shape. It's like this, but at an angle. It's like this... Uh, a rectangle rectangle ang- angle. A rectangled angle. Gotcha. Yeah, so it lies between your shoulder blade and your spine. Yeah, and they help squeeze your shoulder blades toward your spine. And that's where you which get those stretch little your lumps chest out. that go down along your spine. Well, you have spina erecta, probably is what you're thinking of. These long muscles. Uh, yeah, that's what muscles. I was thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> AKA my back. Three, three <laughs> columns along either side of your spine that erect your spine. Yeah, or make you sit up straight. Yeah, I'm so glad we're not playing Scrabble because you're just <laughs> pulling words out. I don't know if you're of, allowed to use Latin in Scrabble. I think it's considered a foreign language. I don't think the kids learn Latin or cursive anymore. So, wow. And plus, what the words, are we missing? At least really teaching them bodybuilding. I don't think there's enough tiles in in the game to yeah. spell those things. Yeah, that's true. Um, so now that you've done this, and you don't think you're going to continue doing this, correct? Gonna, what kind of weight? goals do you have going forward? That's a good question. Um, There is a lot of uh, body change that goes through when you do this, which is why I wanted to do it. I saw this struggle of, I've always got five pounds on. I want to get those five pounds off. But you feel, I felt 
futile in my attempts. So I did something kind of extreme, this Mm -hmm. competition, but it totally changed my body. And I love that. Like when I got pregnant, totally changed my body. I love that. I love that the changes that can happen in a body happen because we're amazing humans and we have these capabilities. But I took off that weight, went to um, more slender than would be healthy weight, you know, for the show. Um, and, you know, like menstruation isn't the biggest thing, but, uh, you know, sometimes you stop menstruating when you don't have enough fat. Sometimes you don't. Like this year, I had uh, that time period right when the show came. Lucky for me. You'd think I'd be at my skinniest and it wouldn't happen because last four years ago, it didn't happen. I skipped one. And then this time it came on the day. So, it's, Bam. But it means that the hormones are all over yes, the place. Yes, is that you, Aunt Flo? <laughs> I didn't invite you. No. Hey, um, I got to stop here because I was thinking back to the the food and veganism and vegetarianism, and that you were pescatarian at one point, and mm-hmm. then you started out a chicken. Iron. Mm-hmm. Where were you getting your iron from? Not the physical that you push around iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the mineral. Yeah, I have. A, I double dosed my daily vitamins, and because they have iron in them, I'd eat them with a meal. And you were talking about supplements, um, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll go back to where I want my body to be later, right? So let's touch on those things that you had asked about supplements, branched chain amino acids, BCAAs, and they're very uh, docile, you know, they're, uh, they're, you just buy them on Amazon in bulk, they're not, they don't taste like anything, they don't add calories. So the supplements per se don't add calories. Um, I also would use creatine right, to help with the muscle uh, bulk, and then um, glutamine in the evenings. And How close is creatine to testosterone? Uh-uh, testosterone. They're not, not, not even close? No, they're not. It's not a hormone-based. Uh, it's a protein-based chain? Mm, that's a good question. I've got to go get my I don't nutrition know. certificate. I don't know. I don't know enough about that to answer that question, but um, I did take those supplements, and glutamine is for muscle soreness. And I've heard that people just take, like, if you're going to do steroids, they do these steroids, and it does all these things for you, you know. But you can also go with natural things, fenugreek. And I did, like, dandelion root when I was hyper uh, hydrating. You drink two gallons a day before you do that dehydration cycle. So when I hyperhydrated, my poor little, you know, kidneys were having to filter a lot. So I did dandelion root, and there was another one for the bladder, like a natural tea, um, uvas. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. But um, those are what I do for iron anyway is the daily vitamins. Um, I bulk up on uh, B12. I'd have two or three versions of B12 and uh, magnesium, calcium, Explain B12 because I've heard, you know, like you can pretty much get away with just having a multivitamin. But Mm -hmm. at the least, you should take a B12 supplement. And D, because some people don't get the sunshine. Yeah. Um, but B12 seems to be on everybody's list. It does what seem is to it? be. I think a homeopath or naturopath would probably be better able to tell you about that because I first heard about B12 through a naturopath, um, Hinchcliffe, Christine Hinchcliffe on the island. Anyway, um, I think it's been promoted as an energy booster. So generally when you're low on energy, you know that B12 helps with that. I also heard about it through when you are vegan and you're not having red meats, which naturally have those iron. kind of in them already. You need that B12 supplement. So I can't say well enough like without having more um, education as a nutritionist, which right. is my next step, i got to say. Right. I've already been looking at like eCornell and a few certifications because I want to find a science-based program that really educates me. These questions are great. I want to know these questions from my clients. I just know my experience, but I need to know scientifically what's, what's the basis and who do I need to say needs it, it or doesn't need it. And it's hard. One scientist will say this and have their their cherry-picked data, and then the next will say something different with well, their Well, that's always data. science, isn't it? You only know what you know at that moment, according to whoever told you. Yeah. But there is the double-blind you know, studies that are usually the best. Yeah, I just listen to the wife because ed- she's a scientist. <laughs> yes, she is. You're lucky. Uh, in more ways than you can mm. ever imagine. Injuries. Have you had any? Well, yes. I had this endeavor, and how do how do you not have a setback mentally when okay you got tennis elbow mm. or whatever? Yeah, 
Uh, well, the first time I started having an AC joint issue with overhead presses. In the shoulder there? Yeah, the top of my shoulder, the boniest part. If you take from your yeah. neck and you go out toward the shoulder, that boniest little spot, it's where the clavicle or collarbone reaches out to the acromion, which is a little piece that comes up from your shoulder blade or clavicle. I know, exactly. AC joint. And believe it or not, I did a push-up uh, a couple weeks back. Yeah. And the, I didn't have pain in my arms or back or chest, but I did right there. That, yeah. And it's like a little bump in your shoulder that if you, if you stick yeah. your finger in, I still feel the pain of it. I, I don't feel it regular motion. Yeah. But if I touch, touch it, it. It's kind of – yeah, it's like it's an attachment pain. site. So you can get a lot of impingement in that region, right? So mm -hmm. I obviously didn't have quite the musculature to support an overhead press because I hadn't been doing it. And I could do them. You know, I'd do like uh, the 30-pound barbell. I'd push it overhead. But right around seven reps, I could feel it sort of icky, icky. Yeah. And then for months, it was so I just stopped doing that, right? So I mm. inverted my uh, bench a little bit so it leaned back, and I wouldn't do a direct overhead press. I'd push it slightly forward, like 30 degrees, perfectly fine. Inclined, yeah. So I might not have built, like, because actually when it came down to it and I show my, uh, my coach what my body looks like, she's like, well, we need more caps, she calls it, deltoid caps. You know, she wants more shape on the deltoid. And I'd be like, well, you know, I'm not going pro. I'm not even trying to go for first place. And when I try to build those, I start to get pain in my joints. So screw it. I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. So that's how, I, you know, it's good enough for me, <laughs> you know. It's, a, it's first place Deanna to build the muscle <laughs> in that different region. So I would uh, avoid that. But the second time, I didn't have it at all. I've built enough musculature that I don't have any of that pain anymore or I've modified just enough that I know the sweet spot where I'm not causing myself injury. So that was one injury spot for me. Well, sometimes it's just a range of motion as opposed to carrying any weight, correct? to get back on the Yeah, rehab. well, what's your range of motion is your muscles, right? Your muscles mm. move you or your bones are pushing in, but usually um, you have a sort of cushion. So unless you've had some detrimental damage like severe arthritis, which luckily at 47, I don't have that much, you know. You haven't had your then, meniscus removed or anything no, like that? No, not yet. So I didn't have any lower body problems or lower back. My core really helped having all that Pilates, so I didn't have lower back pain. Mm -hmm. But if I did too heavy of a lift and I started to feel my lower back, then I knew either stop, you're not strong enough for that in the core, or put on your brace, right? So I have a, a weightlifting belt so that I could do heavier squats, deadlifts, um, you know, good mornings, things like that without needing the core to support me. And I'm a core diehard, so I do believe in the core. But if you're going to go and try to build body bulk, sometimes your body bulk, your musculature is going to be more than your core can support. So I'm all for supporting your core with a machine or a seat or a belt so that you can build more musculature if that's your goal. You know, if your goal is... And if your goal is to be, like, functionally great, like I want to be able to jump over bridges or something, then I better make sure my core, because there's going to be no chair out there, you know, my mm -hmm. core is strong enough to hold me. Um, no. And then I did have that tendon issue this last time. So I had a lot of wrist issues. I had um, tendonitis before I even started training um, for the second round because of my PT, I assume, just doing PT on people. And being a PT, I tried everything a PT can do. Yeah, and you have repetition. Repetitious. R repetitious movements yeah. in your job. Yeah. Yeah, it was sticky and horrible. Um, and I did get a cortisone shot as well. I finally, after a Ugh. year and a half, it lasted three weeks and then it came right back. The only thing, and so I had to modify my workouts by using um, a wrist strap, which was an ankle strap, really. I would strap the weights sometimes or the cable to my uh, wrist, my forearm, and that way I could lift the weights without gripping it. Have you ever heard of a thing called a slingshot? Well, I know what slingshots are. No, in the weight room where you have very strict form by this band that goes around like on bench press and squats and a, a few other exercises. I was just listening to a guy uh -uh. this morning who invented oh, it. Oh, so you take a band and you push the band rather than a weight? It, it kind of just steadies your um, correct form for like uh, dips, uh, chin-ups, bench press, squat, stuff like that. It's almost like a rubber band. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. Uh, yeah, I do do those when I do my pull-ups. So it goes under your foot. Hmm. I think this is the one you're talking you about. You use it so it's many It's a large, ways. large band, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I learned it first in CrossFit because I was like, I got like two pull-ups, that's about all I can do. And she's like, just use this band. 
So I use the band to take my weight off so that I can do a proper uh, pull-up. Yeah, yeah, so I can get to 10 reps because I, I mean, I used to only get two pull-ups. Now I can do eight pull-ups body weight. But uh, I do have to have that narrow cheek grip. Remember I was saying how if I'm going to pull you towards me, I'm going to use my biceps and narrow my elbows. This is a lot easier and I'm stronger than when I go wide. So when I go wide, I'll take some of my weight off with one of those slingshots. Now I know the word for the mm. band. I just called it a big rubber band. But a slingshot's you know, classier. You know how that guy inter- invented it? He was um, squatting over a th- no deadlift a thousand pounds, and his leg gave out, and the, the he fell straight on his back, and the weight crushed him because he got out of balance. So he's uh-huh. like, "What can I steady my balance so my form is perfect?" Oh, okay. And then he came up with that, mm-hmm. and now he's doing well selling those things. Yeah, I use it. I I love it because it makes you feel really successful with things that and usually fluid. you'd be like, "Oh no, I can't do pull-ups." Um, I really uh, like those. Thank you, whoever that invented that. What's his name? Give him some credit. Yeah, yeah. I'll find out. Um, go on. While okay. I look well, for this. you had mentioned what is my body goal now. Right, and I yeah, just wanted to touch on that back because, to running and stuff? yeah, I'm, well, I am doing a little bit of running, but um, there is a bit of dysmorphia that happens with this when you are changing your body, and I think that it happens. Uh, I can't speak for men, but just for women, when you go through pregnancy and post-pregnancy and all of these things, and and aging, you know, you kind of sometimes I don't look at myself for a very long time, like months. Uh, you know, is there a mirror, and I'm not really looking at it. So if I finally look and I think, that's not me, you know, mm. <laughs> you like, I didn't have those wrinkles last time I looked or whatever. I didn't have that skinny face or that fat face or whatever it is last time you looked. It's really amazing how dysmorphia happens with many of us. And when I'm talking about that, it's like morph is change and dys is like a, a non-function, I guess. Yeah. So you're not adapting to the change in your body. And that change might be a natural occurrence. It might be an accidental occurrence. It might be whatever. It could be anorexia or it could be bodybuilding. Yeah, or it could be getting old. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so there was a dysmorphia that I put in there that I because I, I changed my body on purpose. Mm-hmm. And I had to get used to this skinny body, which wasn't natural to me. You know, like having very little breast tissue because I just didn't want to get artificial, so it just goes away when your fat goes away, you know? And mm-hmm. after having, like, babies and you breastfeed and things get big, for them to go away, it was like, wow. You know, remind me of somebody that might get a mastectomy or something, you know? It's like, this is really uh, difficult to look at your body and see the inside of your body and not just the outside. Even though I was purposefully making changes, I had to really identify with my inner self and see who I really am inside because the outside was changing. And then you stop your competition and the outside changes again. And you got to get used to that putting on the body weight again and getting back to what you might call healthy. So I try not to – I mean, I look at my outsides and I'm proud of my outsides. But I try to think is my lifestyle what I want it to be. And therefore, my body turns into this. So am I living a lifestyle where I feel like I'm kind to people and, you know, because that has to do with my personality. If I'm hangry, I'm going to be kind of a witch, right? So uh, eating the right amounts of food made me a little bit more tolerable. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I could say, I'm a nice person. Okay, I'm doing that well. I feel energetic. I don't feel sore every morning when I wake up. You know, all these kind of things on my checklist would make me think, I'm happy with who I am. So your body will be more of your lifestyle now. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm still getting used to how much exercise do I want to have and how much dietary restriction do I want to have. Um, the uh, tendonitis that I had left when I stopped sugar. Right. It totally left. And as I said, years had never helped it of you know cortisone shots or whatever. But when I stopped sugar because it was the last month or two months uh, before show, it went away. And I was like, thank God, this is amazing. You know, drop sugar and you get this. You get n- less yeah. inflammation. So two weeks after the show, I started drinking a glass of wine. I'd have that cookie that I put in the freezer for two months because I couldn't eat it. You know, all these things, and the tendonitis comes back. So I'm stuck with thinking, okay, do I really want to give up sugar so that I can have no tendonitis for the rest of my life? I don't know. Maybe. What was the first thing you ate after comp- this last competition? What were you looking forward to? Like, it was uh, a- Carrot cake. I asked my daughter to make me a, a healthy carrot cake. I know I didn't really need to make it healthy after all that stuff, but 
um, it made me feel better. So it had no sugar, no gluten. Uh, it was made with tahina, and that was Lily made this cake, and it was amazing. And I pretty much ate almost all of it. Not that one night, but I kind of froze it and then kept eating it. And I didn't tell anybody where I froze it because I just wanted to be selfish. Yeah, nobody knows where the freezer is. <laughs> <laughs> Carrots and walnuts in it and all that? Oh, yeah. Everything. Like, you know, everybody else wants it a different way. I just had her make it how I wanted it. It was delicious. Well, a couple more questions before we bounce uh, for anybody that's still listening to us talk, which is great. <laughs> which uh, would be amazing. Sleep. How did you go? How did you frame your mind around sleep and recovery? Hmm. Uh, my body likes eight to nine hours of sleep. So um, I would try to give it that whenever possible. I don't have any problems with sleep. I mean, I know a lot of people do. Hard to get to sleep, hard to stay asleep. If I'm not drinking alcohol, it's, I'm out like a light and I stay all night. So um, I guess the extra water sometimes I would have to get up in the night because I've been drinking so much extra water. So, you know, peeing at night is one night awake. I mean, one time awake. Um, But that was standard, except for, I guess, when I'm running my business. It's kind of hard when I work all day with clients. And then at night is my time to do my own bookkeeping because I run it all myself. So Mm -hmm. I've got to check the books, check the bookings, you know, maybe do some adverts, order more Vista print cards redesign a new course, whatever, you know, that stuff happens at night. So I'll sometimes do up till midnight, you know, work, work, work. And then I have a six hour night that night. I always try to wake up at 6 a.m. So I can get a workout in before I start working with clients. I always try to get eight eight hours. I'll wake up various times, depending on when I go to sleep. I don't have a, I must wake up at six o'clock or whatever. Yeah. But you try to get eight hours is what you're saying. Yeah. Because I feel like. Do you ever feel like you want nine? No, I barely want eight. But oh. I know there's cause and effect with dementia and Alzheimer's with mm. lack of sleep and mm-hmm. that the body needs recovery. It's just like resting your gut biome you yeah. know, and saying, hey, I got to give it a break. Yeah. You know, I can't keep stuffing food down my face. Yeah, stop eating two hours before bed. That's always important. Yeah. And if I remember right, you don't have a TV at your house, do you? We have a TV that plays whatever's on the computer because we plug it in with an HDMI. I gotcha. Yeah. But you don't have the the text well, next and doom scrolling and where TV I and stuff. watch TV only when I'm working out. So I try to keep my videos to I mean Friday night I could watch a show, you know mm-hmm. that kind Cut of stuff. A movie or something. Yeah, but if it's during the week, I better be on the bike if I want to watch my next episode of whatever. Like right, yeah, you know, I better be on the bike or I better be doing something because it just makes me feel better. And I love how. We're thinking about that in the workplace, too. There's different desks. You stand up, you sit down, you move around. Yeah. Um, it's changing for the better, I think. It's not stereotypical yeah, nine to five. You've got to be in there, and you got to sit at a cubicle. You, know, you don't even see – so much office space that's open, and you don't see the cubicle way so much anymore. And well, COVID changed a lot of that, too. Yeah, for the better, the – Ergonomic uh, chairs and stuff? Is ergonomic. That ergonomic? Yeah, really close, though. Erg. I'm the R word, so. <laughs> um, tell people your business and how people would find out more about you and get in contact with you. Okay. Uh, it's a physical therapy concierge business. So, in essence, uh, I am a cash-based b- business. I don't accept insurance. And that means that we're not limited by what an insurance thinks that you need. It's what you need. That's important. So, uh, And then I decide how to deliver it. <laughs> so I do have aquatic physical therapy and Pilates. I have reformers at my house. I have a treatment room at my house with a Cadillac, which is not a car. It's a Pilates a piece of equipment. And a massage bed um, so I can do full treatments. I use a targeted vibration therapy as well. It's like a... Um, uh, very big vibrating wand that's uh, very effective in releasing muscle strain. Kind of like a Theragun or whatever? Yeah, but it uses vibration instead of percussion. Percussion Uh, is a certain frequency, and vibration is more therapeutic, but more expensive because it takes a more expensive machine to do it. Interesting. And reformer, reformers? Reformers are Pilates machines where you lay down on a, a carriage, and it's attached with some springs. And you don't have to lay down. I make a lot of people stand up. I make them push it with their hands, push it with their feet. You know, you could put hands in straps, feet in straps. 
the basis is you get a whole body workout, but your core is the thing that had to stabilize you throughout. So it's not a big body bulker. You tend to see Pilates bodies look poor, more refined. Um, they look lean good. And mean, yeah. yeah, lean and mean, but they're not a big bulky body. So uh, sometimes I have people do both because especially the older you get, the more you ne- need that body bulk on your muscles yeah. to help. I mean, and on you your You also joints. need flexibility. And doesn't yeah. that Pilates reformer help with the yeah. flexibility? Yeah, you yeah. increase flexibility. I say uh, strengthen what's weak and lengthen what's short. That's pretty much my rule. I always say practice your inadequacies and play to your strengths. There you go. Yeah. Um, Oh, so how do you Website, find me? Website, yeah, Website. phone number. So my business is called Heal in Motion PT, and I have a website, www.healinmotionpt. You're so old. Nobody says www. Com. Really? No. You just you say, just say, what do you say, dot com? Yeah. Okay. Just try again. Um, I have a YouTube channel. What? Yeah, Heal in Motion PT YouTube channel. I created it a lot because of my mom. I really care about her, and she exercises like a queen. She's just fantastic. And she missed her YMCA when uh, COVID came. So I said, Mom, I'll come up with some exercise videos. And I recorded them, and I put them on there, and she has her favorites playlists. Awesome. She just doesn't like it when I say, damn, I can't say that in my videos. She considers that a swear word. So they're, they, I try to make them G-rated videos. Okay. I don't always succeed. Um, yeah, and you'll find me at the pool. I'm at the Aquatic Center, uh, Bainbridge Aquatic Center. I work there Monday and Wednesday mornings, but it's my own business, so don't go asking them to, uh, Where's D? you know, yeah. Give, yeah, yeah. Um, you'll just have to contact me through that, or you can call me. Do okay. you have a telephone number? Do you want a telephone number? Well, I'll just put in links in the story. Yeah, let's put links in. That sounds good. Sound good. Well, thank you for your time. Yes, that was fun. A lot more fun than I thought. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a fun guy. Yeah, you are. Tell you should, someone else should do this too. This is good. Be a friend, tell a friend. You've been listening to the Bystander Podcast. Be kind.